we're doing a demonstration of rates of reaction to show how concentration changes affect the rate at which a reaction happens. So here we have a precipitation reaction occurring between sodium thiosulfate and hydrochloric acid that forms a number of products but one of them is a solid that forms a white powder that forms a precipitate that drops to the bottom of the petri dish and as a result we'll see the X's marked on these petri dishes disappearing and what we've got is different dilutions of our sodium thiosulfate the concentration and quantity of hydrochloric acid remains constant and so we're going to see what effect changing the concentration or the dilution of sodium thiosulfate has on the rate at which this re reaction proceeds. So we're going to start by adding our sodium thiosulfate into each petri dish. You'll see that solution A is 75 moles sodium thiosulfate and 25 moles water. Solution B is 50-50 and solution C has a 25 mol sodium thiosulfate and 75 mol of water. What we're now going to do is we're going to simultaneously add 4 milliliters of 1 molar solution of hydrochloric acid to each of these and we are going to observe the rate at which each of these reactions happen. It's important to add the acids all at the same time to ensure that the reaction proceeds at the same rate. Now what we would expect to happen here is that as a result of collision theory which says that in order for a reaction to occur successfully there must be more collisions and more collisions would result in more successful collisions we would expect that the higher concentration of sodium thiosulfate will result in more solution or more particles present therefore more collisions between sodium thiosulfate and hydrochloric acid so we would expect the precipitate, that white powder, to form faster, which is what we see happening here. The white powder obviously drops to the bottom of the petri dish. As it drops to the bottom of the petri dish, it forms a layer that stops us from seeing that X that we have marked at the bottom. Uh, you obviously can't experience this, but there is also some gas that is being released that we can smell. And then our water and sodium chloride that are being formed here. And as expected, the higher concentration of sodium thiosulfate has resulted in more collisions, meaning more collisions per second, meaning more successful collisions, which results in a faster rate of reaction, which is why we can see the precipitate has formed far faster in this reaction than in the next one, where we have a 50-50 dilution ratio, where we can see the reaction has also proceeded faster to form more precipitate than our final reaction in which we are still waiting for enough precipitate to form to cover that X that we have marked on the petri dish. So once again, we know from our reaction rates that there are a number of factors that do influence the rate of reaction. In this reaction though, by ensuring that these reactions all start at the same time, the room temperature and the temperature of these solutions is the same for all of them, means that the only factor that we have changed in this reaction is a concentration, and we can clearly see that a higher concentration leads to more collisions, which results in more successful collisions, which eventually results in a faster rate of reaction, and we can slowly see the precipitate here forming that will eventually cover the bottom of that petri dish. And we can now see that we are nearing the end of the reaction where that X marked at the bottom of the least diluted sodium thiosulfate solution has all but disappeared. And once again showing us that the higher the concentration of reactants in a reaction, the greater the speed or rate of that reaction will be.